Well, good morning, Granville Chapel. Uh, it's great to, to uh, be with you again today. And uh, with me is Andrew Scott, maybe not known to all of you. Uh, Andrew, how would you introduce yourself? Hmm, that's a really good question. I guess I'm uh, by training an architect and uh, I do all kinds of real estate stuff in Vancouver. I'm married to the lovely Vivian and um, it's great to be in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And uh, Andrew, as I recall, you've been uh, attending Granville for about three years now mm -hmm. and uh, it's good to have you and you've uh, very bravely agreed to come and join this conversation today. So thank you for that. And I'm hoping that this uh, will be a good conversation that will open up uh, this, uh, this whole topic for us. So, uh, let's begin. Mm -hmm. uh, so Andy, I understand it's the next few weeks and we are starting a new series called Learning to Listen. What's it all about? Okay, well thank you for asking Andrew, that's, <laughs> that's great. Uh, what we are planning to do with this series, uh, we wanna do this conversational format because it's a little more relaxed and hopefully a little more approachable than the classical preaching. Mm. Uh, but um, I'm concerned that we as a community of God's people uh, learn to listen to what God is saying to us. And in our uh, documentation or uh, a mis a desire to live missionally well, uh, we have BLESS, and many of you will know that that's an acronym. Uh, it's an acronym that uh, starts with begin in prayer. Uh, it then goes on to listen to what the Spirit is saying to you, uh, and then goes on to eat with people, uh, serve them, and then hopefully find an opportunity to share the story uh, with them. Uh, that's our kind of missional template, uh, and we would love to have everybody on board doing that, living their lives in that way, loving their neighbors, caring for their colleagues at work and all that kind of thing. But a key thing, a key part of that is the, is the listen. Mm. Uh, and I think for a lot of us uh, as Christians, we kind of are a little uncertain about this listening. How do we listen to God? It, does God still speak today? Uh, or is it just about reading the Bible uh, and uh, or, or is there more to it than that? How do we, how do we grow in that is really the, the, the question. So these discussions are going to be about trying to look at some of the issues, the uh, realities and the uh, pitfalls, if you like, of trying to hear from God and live our lives in communion with Him. So mm -hmm. that's the plan. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess um, as I read the Bible, which I'm a big fan of doing, um, it seems to be full of God speaking. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you, you pick up the Bible and, and uh, almost anywhere you're, you're going to find God speaking, right? Mm. I mean, mm. so we've had uh, a passage read to us, uh, which I, I came across the other day in Deuteronomy. Uh, and, and this is a, a lovely passage, right? Here it is again. Ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other, has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? I mean, I, I kind of love that, right? Mm. Because mm. this is Moses talking to uh, the people of Israel and he's reminding them how at Sinai, God showed up for them and, and addressed them out of fire. And they lived through that experience, but he spoke to them. And mm. Mm. Uh, Moses is making the point that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, the, the God of Israel, Yahweh, the great creator, is a God who communicates. Mm. And, uh, and he says that sets him apart from all idols and all other gods that there may be out there. He is a God who communicates. And of course, you go back to Genesis 1, and there's God speaking, and the universe comes into being, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. he speaks. And so 
uh, wherever you look uh, in, in the, the Old Testament and then on into the New Testament, you've got a God who is speaking. Mm. And that's, a, that's just a key point. And when you read the stories of the Old Testament, obviously Abraham, uh, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, uh, and then you, know, you move on through the prophets, uh, David, uh, all these guys, Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the, the, the major prophets, they all heard God speaking to them. And they mm. knew that that voice that spoke to them was God. And out of that, they obeyed most of the time. Uh, didn't always get it right, but that was the plan. And out of that, they, uh, they came to know God and, and know that he was a God who communicated. Now, move over into the New Testament. And I love this. There's a little section in Hebrews, uh, which, which, which just, well, it's just kind of neat, right? It, it just captures uh, this little piece which it, it, in which it says that uh, at the start of Hebrews, uh, God spoke to our Jewish forefathers through the prophets in many and various ways. And, and of course, that's a neat summary of what I've just been telling you all about the, the Old Testament. Yes. And in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. And so, so Jesus is actually the word of God who has spoken to us uniquely as the Word made flesh, as John describes him, right? So, so this, this idea that God is a God who communicates is absolutely fundamental to everything we know about God. He speaks. So, I, I get it. <laughs> God speaks all the way through the Bible. Yeah. Um, so if God speaks all the way through the Bible, uh, Sorry to say it, but why do we find it so hard to hear? Well, that, that's the issue, isn't it? I think um, we've established, or I hope we've established, that God is a God who speaks. So the communication problem is not on his end, right? I mean, it's clearly on our end. And, you know, I, this, is, this is dangerous, this next bit, right? Because I have a grandson, and I, I love him to bits. Hugo is... <laughs> Uh, coming up to three incredibly soon, and he's growing like a weed, and I have a lot of fun with him. And uh, But getting to know Hugo, I mean, when he was born, he couldn't understand the words I spoke to him, but that didn't stop me speaking to him because mm -hmm. he had to, how do kids learn? They learn by hearing and, uh, and, and, and kind of growing into that. But now, as he's two and a half uh, and coming up to three, He's in a place where he can actually speak back mm -hmm. and engage. And uh, the fascinating thing is that he is picking up on gaps in his own understanding. So the other day we're, uh, we're, we're reading a book together uh, and he says, what's damage, Grandpa? And so then, then we have to go and describe the word damage. And then we go around the house looking for damage. And there's plenty of bashes and things on the furniture and whatever, <laughs> right? Like, oh, damage, that's damage, that's damage. <laughs> and and, and it's, it's really fun, right? But, but he is actually building his semantic field around that. So, so what's happening there is that he is learning to communicate, but he's also learning to listen and he's understanding and he's growing into that. And I think it's, it's, it's actually very much like that with us and God. Mm. Uh, I think that's the way it's supposed to be. We don't start off kind of just knowing God's voice, right? But, but we can learn it. Uh, and I think we can, we can tune in to the wavelength of his voice, if you like. That, that, that would be the way I would describe it. So this is where we, we kind of move on to this second passage that we had read this morning. And this is the 1 Samuel one, right? Mm. Where, where there's this lovely, well-known story, I think, about uh, Samuel and uh, he, he's this little guy. Uh, we don't know how old he is at this point, but we do know uh, that his backstory, if you like, his, uh, his mum prayed for him to come. Mm -hmm. uh, she couldn't have children and she, she prayed and she dedicated him to God if God would, would give him to her. And uh, sure enough, God heard her prayer and Samuel came along. And when he was three, 
she took him down to the temple at Shiloh and, uh, and gave him to the priest and said, you raise him. I've dedicated him to God. So he was kind of put into this, this place of, of learning uh, about God. Now, it's an interesting story in, in so many ways, but one of the pieces that, that, that I like about it, it comes right from the early days of, uh, of Israel in, uh, in their promised land. Uh, they haven't got the kings established at this point. They've been through a, a time of chaos with the judges. Uh, when you read the book of Judges, you realize that they quickly forgot who God was uh, and they did all kinds of crazy stuff. And then they, there was penalty and, and, and uh, they got overrun by enemies. And then they would eventually go, oh yeah, God, let's go back to him. And, <laughs> and uh, it was a crazy time and mm. there was all kinds of uh, unpleasant stuff going on. They really lost the plot very quickly. And so this story comes out of that time. And there's this little note that we get in the, in the passage that says, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There were not many visions. Mm. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by that, right? And I think that's worth thinking about because faith in God is not primarily a solo activity. It's not just me and God. It, it, it's actually me in a community and trying to relate to God as part of a community. And so at any given time, we are in an era of history uh, and an epoch of, of history, if you like, that matters uh, because God may be doing things in that time or, or may not be doing things in that time. And, and in this time, the word of the Lord, uh, when, when Samuel was around, was rare. Right, So either God wasn't speaking much or more likely people weren't listening much, mm -hmm. right? I mean, because they'd, they'd kind of forgotten, oh yeah, God, you know, he's out there somewhere. So, so in this story, it's, it's a key point that God is not being heard mm. uh, until, and, and then of course, this is where the story uh, kind of unwinds on us, right? Uh, so Samuel is lying there at night and uh, it's a kind of, just a quiet night, and, and, and God calls Samuel. And Samuel, bless him, I mean, he's just a little guy. What is he, 10 at this point? We don't know, maybe. Uh, he wakes up and he goes, oh, somebody's calling me. It must be Eli. Who else is there around here? Eli's the priest, right? So, and, and, and you get this kind of lovely, funny story, right? So Samuel uh, rushing into Eli's bedroom, shaking him and saying, you called me, here I am. <laughs> And, and, uh, and Eli, and I'm sure he's grumpy as, as anything, right? No, I didn't. Go back to sleep, right? And, and, and then this happens, and it happens. So three times it happens. Uh, uh, and then finally, uh, a very grumpy Eli puts it all together and goes, let's see, I'm not calling him. He thinks someone's calling him. Who else could it be? You know what? I bet it's God. <laughs> and so, and then he tells him, if you hear it again, don't bother me. I think that's probably uh, Eli's kind of main, uh, main thrust here. Don't bother <laughs> me, but say to God, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, mm. right? And, and, and that's the moment, uh, of course, when God speaks again. Samuel turns to God and, uh, and he, he hears, mm. and God has a lot to say. Uh, and it's actually a judgment on, on Eli. It's quite disturbing, really, what God is going to do to Eli's family. Uh, and but 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 that's the that's the piece of the story, right? So mm -hmm. anyway, I, that's that. So does Samuel learn to listen? Yes, he does. I mean, mm. he becomes a prophet, right? And he he hears from God a lot uh, in his in his lifetime. So this is his beginning, and he is just learning the trade, if you like, of listening to God in this in this little story. Yeah, very interesting. So so what's that for us? What's what's the meaning of that ancient story for us? Well. I think there's a couple of things here. Uh, you know, first I would say, we actually have to learn to listen as part of a faith community. Mm. So Samuel would probably have got there in the end. I mean, uh, he, he would have figured out that it wasn't Eli. And so he, he would probably have put two and two together and, and, and gone, oh yeah, that's probably God uh, and, and got there. But, but he actually needed Eli for, for the direction on how to listen. Mm. And, and I, my suspicion is that those who've gone before us in the faith 
uh, often have really good counsel to dispense uh, to us on actually how to listen for the voice of God. And, and I think that's a, that's a point that we can kind of take lift right out of this story and go, you know what? Uh, it's not just about me. It's about me as part of a community. So who are the people in this community that have learned to listen to the voice of God? And maybe I could learn from them. Maybe they can disciple me in that listening, right? That, that would be uh, one, one key takeaway from the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second piece I would say would be that Samuel eventually actually had to listen, right? I mean, God was calling and God, God is a gentleman. He doesn't impose himself on us, right? Mm-hmm. He invites us into mm-hmm. conversation, I think. But mm-hmm. as Samuel heard the voice on the fourth time at least, uh, he actually had to say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. And he had to quiet his heart enough to be able to hear what God had to say for, to him. And, 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 and I think that's about getting quiet enough that we silence our own voices and all the voices in our head and all the social media and all that kind of stuff. And we, we create a kind of still space in which we can really hear God speaking to us. And I think that's, that's perhaps the beginning uh, of, of learning to listen, that we, we actually have to come into stillness uh, and quietness uh, and, and learn to listen. I, I think often we're so busy firing our prayers in God's direction that, that it's all too easy to not give him a chance to speak back. And maybe he's sitting up there going, well, I've got lots of things to tell you. <laughs> But you rush in, you ask me all these things, and then you rush out again. And I, it's like, well, did you listen? Mm. Uh, so I, I, think, I think there may be something of that in the, out of this story that I would take and, and, and say, this, is, yeah, this could help us. Mm. Do, do, you, do you see anything in this story, uh, Andrew? Oh, for sure. I, I get where you're coming from, for sure. <laughs> um, the one thing that I take solace in, I guess, is the fact that... Um, God called out Samuel's name four times, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> three times and then the fourth. Yep. And so I, I see him as uh, reaching, out, reaching out to us and being pretty persistent, mm-hmm. like when we're a bit thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when something's really, I guess, important, perhaps rather than being hard to catch, perhaps it's, it's uh, that he will pursue us until we're ready to hear it. Yes. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that... That's, that's certainly true to his character, mm-hmm. and it's certainly true to the, well, all these great stories out of the Old Testament. You know, God, God has an agenda. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he's got things he wants to do, and he wants to use people uh, and, and cooperate with people in, in doing those things, I think. Mm-hmm. So he's, mm-hmm. you know, he's looking for people who will listen, I think, primarily. Right. Yeah. So, so, Andy, let's mm-hmm. get personal. Yeah. <laughs> like Samuel, um, have you heard God call you? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I have. Uh, I, I've heard him several times in, in my life, uh, Andrew. Um, and, and he's spoken to me in various ways. Uh, and it's, so it's not about the way he speaks, I think, but, but it's the fact that he does speak. Right. So there have been times when Scripture has just kind of come alive and I've known, oh, this is important. Mm. Uh, and, and then subsequent uh, events have proved that, oh, that was his voice mm. because somebody else uh, got hit by the same passage. Uh, that, that, that happened a, a, a lot of years ago. So, so the Bible, uh, I think, is, is probably his primary uh, vehicle mm. for communicating with us. Okay. But, but I... What I want to say is that I, I think beyond, beyond the Bible, yes. because the Bible is so full of the fact that it's a living God who speaks, there have been times when, when he has spoken to me through community. So when he's spoken to someone who's had a word for me, a word of encouragement or a word of counsel, that I have known it like, that's the Lord. That's the Lord speaking through that that person in, yeah. in, in community. And then a couple of times, and this is much rarer, 
uh, I, have, I have actually heard him speak directly to my heart and, and tell me stuff that I would not have known if that hadn't been him. Mm-hmm. And th- that's rare. Uh, you know, I, it, I would say it's only a couple of times that I've, that I've heard that. But subsequent events were, were, were very important and, and it really was him. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say that when, when he speaks to us and we hear him, and, and identify it as, uh, as him, that word sits in our heart, right? It, it's like a very special place in our heart that that, that word occupies, if, if you like, because it's his word to us. Mm. So, and, you know, I'm, I've been in ministry now for, well, a lot of years. Gosh, it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's about 30, Andrew. I mean, I, I can't believe I'm this old. Uh, but but as, as I've, I, I would say my one regret uh, at this stage in my life is that I have not done a very good job of stilling my heart to listen more. Uh, and I think ministry tends to make you busy. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of things to do and you keep on going. And uh, what, I, what I wish, uh, my, my regret, is that I haven't spent more time being quiet enough to listen properly. Uh, and, and I think I have suffered because of that and perhaps our community has suffered because of that. Mm. And, and, and so that's a regret, but, but you know, God is gracious. And here is a, a series that we're going back over this ground. Uh, and you know, I, I believe that, that God wants relationship with us, right? Mm. And so, uh, and he wants to speak to us. And I think if we can carve out space and time, then I think he will speak. What about you? You've, you've heard God speak to you? Oh, I, I love what you're saying, Andy. Uh, even in prayer, I, I hear a friend pray something and I think, oh, yes, that, that's exactly what I needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I know what you mean about community, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, we're experiencing it in our prayer group. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess the, the, the Bible still is a pretty central component mm-hmm. um, where, I, where I do uh, find God reminding me um, who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I find that, uh, that he is close mm-hmm. um, and that he has a plan. Yeah. And it's a good plan. Yes. It's a loving mm-hmm. plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and interestingly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test you on this. <laughs> You'll know it. Memory verse, Romans, Romans 8, 28. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, all things. All things work together for good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And the rest of it is? To them that love God. Yeah, yeah there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not, not trying to test it. <laughs> did I, did I pass? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, but I think of that verse, right? Yeah, all yeah. things work together for good yeah. for them that love the Lord. Mm-hmm. And uh, I see it as backed up by some Old Testament story. Let's say like, Joseph, yeah. you know, uh, sold into slavery, favoured son sold into slavery, 13 years under the hammer um, in prison, betrayed, um, just having a very bad time mm-hmm. from our observation, but God yeah. was close. Yeah. Um, and at the end of that time, he was elevated to the second position in the whole of Egypt and mm-hmm. that was God's plan from the start. Right. Yeah. Um, so I guess that... Those stories mm-hmm. the, that are in the Bible, I, I find that God speaks them in an in a f- interesting way mm-hmm. directly into the, the hardships or, or difficulties that knock on my door. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I, that, I guess that's, a, that's my way of thinking of it at yeah, this stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And, and mm. uh, you know, please don't think that, I, that I'm saying, you know, we... We need to simply abandon the Bible. No. I mean, the, the Bible is key, right? I mean, the, the Bible is God's book. It's his revelation to us. Uh, and we, we don't want to ever want to go far from the Bible. But my only point here is that the, the Bible is what points us to a God who communicates. And if he could communicate in the Old Testament to all those guys then, and if his spirit has been released on the church, uh, then, then we as the church are supposed to be being led by the Spirit, right? Mm-hmm. And, and He is the one that will guide us into truth and will, will make things apparent to us. And that's the, uh, the, 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 the beauty of the whole thing. So absolutely, uh, we, 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 we never want to get far from the Bible, mm-hmm. but we do want to get 
close to the God who speaks the Bible, right? That, that, that's the point. I mean, we, we, we don't want to get alienated from Him mm. because it's His presence and His reality that is the center of the book. Uh, and, uh, and that's what we need. Uh, and, and, and he's the one that we need to listen to. So anyway, that's... that's yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I like what you're saying. His yeah. presence and his reality. Yeah. 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 Okay. So mm-hmm. what else are we going to be studying in this fabulous series? Okay. Well, <laughs> um, Paul Williams and Mike Bennett are uh, going to be teaching this series with me. And uh, they're going to be having conversations in subsequent weeks. And, uh, and the hope is that as uh, this series unfolds, we're all going to be encouraged to listen to what God is saying to us. And we're going to be looking at some more of the important stories uh, from the Bible that I hope will be instructive. And uh, the plan uh, is that uh, all our community groups will be able to pursue these discussions further. So we're preparing questions that uh, will come out uh, later today uh, to the community group leaders. And hopefully you can pursue this in your community groups And uh, these questions will get you kind of going on this discussion. And um, as we wrap up this this conversation for today, uh, I I do want to thank you, Andrew, for coming and bravely (laughs) being part of this. Uh, And I want to encourage all of us this week to uh, take some time as we're praying or reading the Bible to invite God uh, to speak to us uh, in the same way that Samuel did. And, you know, maybe he's got some stuff for us this week that will bring hope and change to our hearts Mm. uh, if we can just be quiet enough uh, to listen to what he's got to say. So that's my that's that's my encouragement this week as we uh, as as we move on from this uh, this time. Awesome.